In the last episode, I installed some shiplap on the ceiling, cut the opening for the side door, <laughs> installed the side door, and finished up running the electrical for the solar panels. Welcome back. My name's Jax, and I'm taking this Ford E350 cargo van and converting it into an RV. Okay, so <laughs> I gotta get better at this filming stuff because I, I keep missing a bunch of things, you know, content that I'd like to add in, but I just, I'm so focused on trying to get something accomplished that I forget to stick the camera in my face or on the, on the work that I'm doing. So now the roof fans are currently 12 volt, um, which I only need two wire for that. And I could use the 12, two, 12, two wire that I've got, except um, if I were to swap these out, one or the other out with an air conditioner, it's going to require uh, 110 volts. Um, so what I ended up doing was ordering some 12-3 uh, wire, which came in yesterday, last night. So I'll be able to run the wiring for the two fans two two roof fans uh with 12.3 we'll just we just won't use the ground we won't use the, the third wire but it'll be there when if and when um, an ac unit gets installed and i don't know if i'm gonna put i don't know if i'm gonna put the ac in the rear or put the ac in the front um so i'm gonna run you know three wire to both sides so i'll have a choice Now that I have the 12 gauge 3 wire ran, I can start making the connections to the roof vents. I'll strip the wires, crimp them together with an appropriate wire connector, and then heat shrink them with a heat gun. Alright. Perfect. With the connections made, I can now reinstall the fan. I'll repeat these steps for the second roof vent. I picked up this handy label maker because I wanted to keep track of the wiring, but it will also work to label other things as well. No big fingers ain't cut out for this. Here we go, roof vent. All right, well that's a that's a collection of wires, that's for sure. So these are these are the, the solar coming up from the top. We've got a main lights. There's going to be the power feed, and then this is going to the lights themselves. So that'll, and I've got a switch already ready to go. Um, this one here. What is this one exactly? This one here is uh, oh, to the 12 volt sub panel that goes up in behind the bulkhead there. And then we've got the two fans. And then yesterday, this piece of plywood, which is um, quite, a, quite a cutout piece. Um, this is part that I should have filmed, but I didn't film because I was wrapped up in the, getting it cut out. Um, so that piece goes in and around the doorway here and around the rail. Um, and then there's a hole, a switch hole there for the lighting, main cabin lights. And then I've got um, below in the cabinet space is the exits for the wiring to come out into the cabinet space where all the electrical stuff's going to be at. So. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and cut in another one of these access holes for the wiring. That's the uh, touch switch for the LED. And I'm going to put another one in right here. And that, this will be for the over, this will be for the main lighting and then I'll have another one over here for the over cabinet access, accent lighting. I laid out the opening for the new light switch, drill a couple of pilot holes, and then cut it out to the jigsaw. <laughs> 
after a general cleanup, I'll insulate the area I'm going to work in next. After running the wires through the appropriate holes of the sheet, I discover an unlabeled wire. That will not do at all, so I quickly rectified the problem. Time to cut another sheet of plywood for the walls. After a dry fit and a few adjustments, I was ready to add the insulation and install this wall sheet.
Progress was certainly made this day as I was able to insulate and install all the wall sheets. Got the interior uh, well probably 99% sheathed I've got a couple of spots above the rails uh, that I got to complete but that's that's minor I'll have to pull these aft ship lap pieces out and trim them off because they're they're not cut to the right right, right length for that and then uh, yesterday afternoon um, I kind of played it doing this I wasn't sure if I wanted to because it was late and I had to make sure I my thought was in was correct but I, I went ahead and cut it anyways and well the blade jigsaw blade walked and so then so we're not very square on the cut but I managed to get the window to fit so yeah, end of uh, end of this day, we've got a few things done. <laughs> a couple, a couple things done. Uh, let's see. So we cut in. We cut in. Uh, well, yesterday we cut in this window, and then uh, today we cut in the window on the other side, and got that all buttered in pretty nice. It's set up and ready for the frame now in the window got a couple of coats of primer on there and then uh patched in patched in above the rails uh with some plywood and buttered, buttered in this corner here so that it would look reasonably finished um, i'm gonna have to take these back out again so i can paint paint that but that much is done and then uh, out of nowhere I remembered um, I needed a, I needed a switch plate and a line run for the galley lights and we've got uh, we've got the accent lighting I ran that but I forgot about the the uh, the galley lights that go underneath the, the cupboards the upper upper cabinets so I ran that and that's just laying on the floor. Eventually, we'll get it run over to the other side where the where all the electrical is going to end up at. But that's that's today. That's what we did today. Oh yeah, and one one more thing. Didn't get this on camera, but got this this trim put in. Now I stopped it just before the curve up there because there's a. A cover plate that goes up there so I won't need to I won't need it there so that finishes that off and then I ordered a stopper a door stopper so that's coming we can mount that in there and that's it that's our that's our door so I got some wiring in which I'm gonna let that ride Managed to get a couple of pigtails complete here. These will be for the uh, 12 volt lighting, 12 gauge wire overkill, but uh, you know, didn't want to have any major issues with the run because it is rather long. Uh, so there'll be pigtail like that on each each one of these sets. So they'll poke through the ceiling, and then I'll, I'll look, worry about that later. Right now. I'm looking at trying to get the wiring up out of the middle of the the build here so I'm gonna go ahead and fit my first first piece here now I kind of calculated that there's gonna be 13 hole and two slivers on each a sliver on each side uh, to finish which will work out good. So that'll, that'll be a single piece here in the very, very center. So that's the first one I'm going to throw up, um, get up there and 
organized into place and then that will be my starting point for the rest of them now this one here will stop at that fan in the front but the rest of them are going to run or have probably run long to catch the the cab over uh, area there but otherwise we'll see what it looks like when we get it up there I think it's gonna rain again. I think it's gonna rain. Alright, let's have a look. It looks uh yeah. Alright. Pop those out of there now. So yeah, that's gonna look pretty clean. I'm gonna cut that section out where the fan is. Um, this side over here, I've got a filler piece in. Catch that side, because there'll be a trim ring around for the fan. But that takes care of that. That looks pretty nice. Now here, I'm cutting out a large notch where the shiplap would otherwise cover over the vent opening. Thank you very much for tuning in this week. Be sure to tune in next week to see me finish this shiplap ceiling. Feel free to leave a comment, and if you enjoyed this episode, consider liking and subscribing to my channel. See you next week.